Hi, my name is Kathy Moyne and we're here at Green Thumb Nursery today to talk about bird baths of all things. So this was something that you purchased and you thought, hey, this will be really cool. I'll, I'll uh, track some birds. And then you get it out there and you realize, oh, I got to clean it out. Oh, the birds really aren't coming to it. Oh, it's got mosquitoes. Now what? So don't throw them away. Let me show you what you can do to fix that problem. So we're going to get rid of the base for now. I'm gonna break it. And we are going to take this base and make it into a succulent arrangement. Now we can get away with this because succulents are very shallow rooted and they don't need a lot of water. Even though there isn't a drain hole in here, as long as we don't go crazy with the water, we'll be able to plant succulents in here and have them not get too wet. So, I'm going to start with my little centerpiece. Now I know this looks like, how is this gonna go into here? And how is this gonna go into here with all these other things? Well, the one thing about succulents, which is nice, is that we can manipulate the root ball on these and have them still survive, believe it or not. Which is another reason why I like to use succulents for this, this, uh, this application. Now we can use some of this soil. I'm gonna leave it in here. All right, so now I'm gonna center him in. We'll take a little more soil off because I, I want him to be slightly on a mound in the middle. In middle, middle. <laughs> um, but yet I don't want him to be too high because we're going to graduate down. Okay, so now I'm going to, since this is, this is a colancho, a variegated colancho. I don't know if there's a, yep, variegated colancho. And next we're going to put, I want to like, I like the contrasting. I got some pinks in here, the blues matching the blue. This one is an Echeveria Neon Breakers. And this one, it's got such a pretty kind of a neon-y kind of color and again this is something that we can break down the root ball and we are going to shove it into this little corner right here and I'm going to give it a little bit of an angle so that it's going to look outward and then I'm going to follow up with another similar color this one is Echeveria pink pearls and we're going to put that on the other side and he's not quite as big of a root ball, so I'm going to have some stuff that I can put in between the edge. But at least that's going to count my 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 going to get it going across from each other. Then we're going to use this one is Haworthia fasciata zebra. I like Haworthias. Haworthias are so easy; you can put them. In, in your house. You can put them outside. They are a great little addition to the garden. Okay, this one is a crown of thorns and it does have thorns, but those flowers are on it all the time. So if you don't get down in the middle of it and you get to the thorns, then you'll be okay. So, but keep in mind, there's thorns in here. It is a loaded, gun if you're not careful it will poke you pretty good okay and he's gonna go right there then we're going to get we're gonna pull in the blue grays of my our pot and the centerpiece this is Echeveria Violet Queen and there's some dead stuff on here we'll just this is the time to pull out that dead stuff kind of accumulates down at the bottom there so if you don't do it when you, if you try to do it when you're not pulling it out of the pot, you end up breaking these little leaves. Okay, so now we're gonna put that one. I'm gonna throw him over on this side. And I like the, I like the, now we're also going to use to fill in, we're gonna use some EB Stone, cactus and succulent mix, good old EB Stone. And I do have an empty bag, or an open bag down here, so I'm gonna be pulling from that and I wanna open up my my stock, stock item. <laughs> they wouldn't like me very much if I keep opening up bags all the time. Alright, so I'm going to fit that in there so he's going to 
uh, prop him up with some soil and that'll take up some space there and then this is going to be my opposite side so this one is Echeveria Segunda Segunda and that's going to go over on this side so to me these just look like little flowers um, a lot of people say, I don't like succulents it looks like Arizona well it can and we are a desert so <laughs> I guess we can we might have to look a little like Arizona if we're not too careful all right this one is Aeonium Sunburst and he's gonna actually with age get taller so again he's gonna fit right in here in the back and we've got some nice contrast with the yellows and the pinks this one also has a nice pink edge along it so again this one's got a little peak it pink edge along it along it so we're kind of pulling in these same similar looks to each other this one here is also a sedum as well and I'm gonna use that on my other side and this one's gonna vine a little bit but that's okay I don't mind if it's gonna gonna send off a little bit of a vine over the edge that'll be fine will make him oh it will make him play well with others okay so now that's pretty much got my my first layer from the center so now we're gonna start crossing T's and dotting I's okay so where do I have some spots where I could use some height I'm gonna use this one this is a uh, sedum gold copper and I'm going to break him up. That's again, that's another wonderful thing about succulents is we can break these up and put them into places where we need maybe some more height. So I'm going to tuck him in here and that'll give us some more height. Don't worry if you break off one of the little pieces. Those little pieces, actually, the leaves will start growing again another plant. So if you do break something off, don't fret. You can save it and plant it, or you can just throw it away. It really, it's, that's how I guess Mother Nature works. All right, I'm gonna put this back behind my little, my little, if I can get it in here. Gotta be careful, it's got the thorns. All right, so we got that, that in there. That'll give us a little bit of height behind the crown of thorns. And then I look like I can use some height right here in this little section here. So I'm going to go ahead and tuck him in there and then I'm going to pull him back in again. All right, now we're starting to shift, get shifty here. Okay, so now I can start throwing in some little texture pieces. So these are, this is Crashula perfor, Perforata Variegata. Perforata Variegata. The Perforata Variegata. Okay, and I'm going to stick him over here because he's going to peek out. He's going to peek out from, from this little grouping here. And it kind of helps to know how these are going to grow. So, there, I just kind of visualize them doing their thing in a couple years. So, let's see, here's the rest of it. And then we're going to throw a couple more of those in here. And those will grow out from the edge and then let's see looks like I got some room in here I could put some right here and that'll grow out of the edge there now I'm going to go ahead and throw some Osmocote in here because I'm getting to the point where I'm going to come to the edge and it's much easier to throw some of this stuff in here now while I'm working on it uh -oh. I don't want to get these stuck in the leaves because if they're not touching the ground, the Osmocote is not going to work. <laughs> so it, it, when you water, it releases a little bit of fertilizer. So it has to be in the soil. If it's up on the leaves of the plant, it's not gonna work. So, okay, so we got some in there. All right, so that's good. And don't worry if these things fall over. As soon as we get more towards the end, they'll start tucking, each, uh, tucking in with each other. Okay, so now I've got this here, I got that there. Now I can put something right in this spot here 
to help hold some space. And I'm going to use this Echeveria Ag Agavoides Vichon. And again, we're going to bring that nice red color into this mix. And I'm going to stick him right there. So now we've got like, looks like little flowers. Look how nice that looks. Okay, so now I'm going to see if I can put a piece of wood or something in here to make it more interesting. I think I'm going to use this little guy right here. And I'm going to shove him down into this little section here. And that will give us just a little more texture to look like this is out in nature. Okay, so now I'm going to use... I'm going to come over here. This one is uh, Crassula Baby Necklace. Isn't that cute? Your baby necklace. Baby necklace. All right, so we're going to stick a little baby necklace right here. And baby necklace is going to kind of hang over the edge. So that'll look really cool. And if the little pieces fall off, you just kind of shove it down in there. And let's put another little baby necklace over on this side. Because that'll look kind of cute hanging over the edge right there. Very nice. Okay, so now I can use some of these ones that are going to uh, trail over the edge. This is Sedum Little Miss Missy. And this one's a real easy one to grow. And it's pretty easy to pull apart and stuck in stuff into places where you want some hangover well not a hangover I don't know. stay away from those hangovers <laughs> we don't want hangovers but we want something to hang over the edge of the pot so let's see i'm going to put this one in this little hole right here okay let me get some of these pots all right, so now this is coming together rather nicely. I think I need something right here, and this guy here looks like it's going to fit in there. This is a sedum as well, and I think he's going to fit right in here. I'm going to turn it so I can see what I'm doing, and he should fit in there rather nicely. Okay, pull that in a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to put... Okay, this one is Sedum Rubrotinctum Dwarf. And this is a pork and beans relative. Whoop. And he is so cute and dainty. I'm gonna stick him right on the edge here. Oh yeah, that's gonna look sharp. Okay. So now we've got that pretty much taken care of as far as, uh, I'm going to throw this little, this is a little Echeveria, just something we can kind of take up and put in this little hole right there, nice, and that'll fill out and into this area there. Now I want to put some of this stuff in here, yeah, I'm going to put that right here in front, and then I have... Yep, one more. Okay, so this one is going to come along the front here. Let me get these off of here. My IT guy is telling me to move the pot so we can see what we're doing. There we go. Now when I get done with this, I'm going to cement this in with some sphagnum moss. Good old sphagnum moss. It's really good for filling in little areas where while you're trying to wait for this stuff to root in. Okay, I'm gonna dig some whole soil out of there. Shove that little guy down in there. Alright, and you can be a little rough with these. Because if you break them, you can just put them back in there again. And this one is Othana Capensis ruby necklace and it does look like a little necklace it's got little ruby colored stems to it and this is going to hang down nicely and we're going to stick this over in this little section right here 
Give it a little trailing right there. And boy, this guy is not happy with me messing with him right this close, but that's okay. All right. Okay. All right, so now I've pretty much got it planted up. I'm not gonna need too much more in here. This is nice and full. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my sphagnum moss. Uh, this guy right there. And I'm going to tuck it into the places where it's a little loose or there's roots showing to kind of help hold it together until it gets rooted. So this particular arrangement, I would more, more apt to have it in a more of a, um, a shady spot rather than a full hot blazing sun spot because you don't want it to dry out too much. So you can water this sparingly because you don't want it to fill up with water and or you can mist it you can actually take a mister and mist it if it's cool out it'll last for weeks probably before you need to water it if it's hot out you may have to mist it once a week osmocote you only have to do it twice a year so we can next spring we'll sprinkle some more osmocote in here now as these grow You'll, you'll have to mess with them. You're gonna have to do something with them. They can't just, they can't just keep growing and not, you know, they're just gonna grow out. So you're gonna lose some, some of your shape. And that's where I've got the video on how to repurpose, how to redo your, your succulent, your succulent pot. Um, it's just a matter of taking the, the tops of them off again and taking the old root ball out and re-centering them and re-potting re, re, um, them. Um, succulents, when you pull them off, you need to let them heal over if you're doing cuttings, which means you just don't want to put raw meat, so to speak, back down into the soil. So you let the, where it cut, heal over and then, then you have a little more success in getting it to root and not die on you. Sometimes if they stay, to, they, if they're wet and when you put them in there, they could rot. So, and again, this is just, I'm trying to firm it down so these guys don't just fall out. And it'll probably take about a week. Now we're in the nice cool season right now, so they will it will probably root out if we get another nice rain that would be great um, it would probably root out a little bit quicker so let me see here right, right, right. get that in there okay i think that's pretty much got it i don't know if i can move this up so you can kind of see it and see it's nice and tight because of that sphagnum moss. So on top of the pedestal, let me get the pedestal here so you can see what it's gonna look like. Hopefully I don't drop it. And there you have it. Your succulent arrangement bird bath. If you like what you saw, please click the like button. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe and check us out for our next video. Please do some commenting. That would be great. I love to hear the comments. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.